If you're looking for a game to scratch that itch left by games like the original Fear, Trepang 2 is your game. With so many shooters in the indie realm taking influence from Doom, Quake, and Build Engine titles, it's nice to see Fear get its due. I checked out the demo for Trepang 2 about a year ago. I love my time with it. I was cautious about how a full game would turn out. Was there enough here to flesh out into a full-fledged game? The answer is yes, absolutely. It's clear how much this team loves Sphere. At times, it's a bit too on the nose with its inspiration, but it's a wonderful love letter and spiritual successor to Fear. I had a blast with Trepang 2. From the balls to the wall action to effective horror sections drowning in atmosphere, Trepang 2 is a title you don't want to miss. It's a great example of a small, passionate team outclassing what you'll find coming from large studios. Here's to hoping the game gets its due. Safety warning. Significant increase in recent workplace accidents. 32 injuries. 74 deaths. 102 uncategorized. Thanks to publisher Team17 for providing a review key. No major issues performance-wise to report on. Trepang 2 pulls heavy influence from fear in regards to combat, with its own little twists. We have a two-weapon limit to swap between. The usual guns that you expect. Pistols, shotguns, SMGs. There's a basic upgrade system. Lower recoil in exchange for higher reload times, suppressor, laser sights. One specific upgrade turns a gun into this game's equivalent of fear's penetrator. We'll find these throughout our excursions. Despite being a first person title, we'll have several options for our outfit. Trepang has a lot to live up to with Fear as its inspiration, a title I consider to have some of the better guns around, both from practicality and satisfaction of use. <laughs> I'm happy to say that the shotgun is up to par. We could also use melee strikes along with a jump and a slide kick. One core feature of Trepang 2 is the slide mechanic. Use it for dodging, moving around corners, get up close and personal with enemies. Use it for a kick or up close for a bullet to the head. It's very responsive. After a few minutes with it, you'll know your distances in regards to how far you could slide. We have a couple of options for powers in Trepang 2. Focus mode to slow things down and cloaking for a short period of time. Focus refills through kills, cloaking refills over time. Again, comparing to fear, the combat moves at a more frantic pace. Using focus mode to slow things down is very helpful. It's hard to get a grip on enemies when moving at normal speed. At first, I wasn't sure about the addition of cloaking. If you want, you could use a suppressor and take out enemies one by one, which seems to go against the grain of what the game is going for. Instead, I use it to get the drop on enemies when beginning encounters. If you find yourself overwhelmed in a combat scenario, it's great to catch a breather. The further I got in, the more I found myself using cloak due to the difficulty. Get a breather, reload, and get back into the fold. One feature I loved was taking enemies hostage. I love the detail put into using the shotgun one-handed while holding a hostage in the other. I love the Attaching a grenade to a hostage and tossing the body for some laughs. It's funny how the hostages don't put up any fight and have given up on life at this point. Trepang 2 offers dual wield, although not at first. For someone as powerful as Subject 106, our character, it's amusing he needs a serum to use it. You can dual wield shotguns. Need I say more? Fear had impeccable pacing of combat encounters. This was due to excellent environments with strong AI. Trepang 2 does a great job of living up to it. During the first level, I did have concerns the rest of the game was going to follow a bit too close with the industrial-like settings. It ended up being nothing to worry about. Trepang 2 switches up the environments on the regular. Love homages to Fear, but enough to stand on their own. Some tight spaces, some more open. Combat arenas have many points of entrance and verticality. I wasn't expecting the game to live up to Fear's AI, and granted, few games can. But Trepang did a fantastic job on the AI front. It was more difficult to get a gauge due to the more frantic pace. But enemies do a great job of spreading out, hitting you from different directions, and keeping you on your toes. Even with that frantic pace, it does a good job of having enemies stand out from the environment. 
There are no major readability issues found here, something that plagues modern games, especially those using the Unreal Engine like Treypang 2 does. To note about the enemies we'll be mowing down, Treypang 2 had some quality banter. Anyone who played Fear will have those lines burned into their brain. Treypang 2 has a no I love this one screen some enemies would do while dying. Over the top and always makes me chuckle. One of our pilot's voice actors does his best Steve Bloom impression. I'll be there at 106. Hilo is ready to go. On the note of sound, the music is fantastic in Treypang 2. Number of tracks that wouldn't sound out of place on the Fear soundtrack. Although some get into the, for the lack of a better term, Chug Chug McGordon Modern Doom style, which is fine, but I didn't find it as fitting here. One area that doesn't quite live up to fear is environmental destruction in the aftermath of combat. To this day, fear is next to unmatched in regards to destructible environments in combat. Dust kicking up, bullet holes, destructible items. Some of my favorite moments in fear would be admiring my carnage after a battle. Yes, Treypang has plenty to offer for environmental destruction, smashing up bars, libraries, wooden structures, but not to the same level as fear. Granted, I'm guessing it's more related to game engine issues. Fear ran on an engine made by the developers at Monolith to specialize in these areas. Unreal Engine is very much a one-size-fits-all engine at this point. Coming into Treypang 2, I was curious to see what they would do in regards to horror. No, there are no creepy little girls like Alma here. But there are missions where the horror ramps up, and they do a great job of building up the atmosphere. One stretch early on will have us deal with these goo creatures. A nice change of pace, although not as fun as regular enemies. This is a good time to get them to chase you, use cloak, gather them like cattle, and chuck a grenade. There is something during the fourth main mission that I'm still unsure what to make of. I'm not going to spoil it to you. You'll know when it happens. I'll only say zoomers are going to play this section in utter fear. The mission starts to mess with you and the environment around you. In one area in which you end up in, I burst out laughing when it happened. I'm not sure if the developers were taking the piss here. It's only a short section, but something that felt like it had been better suited as an easter egg, or a side mission, but not along the critical path. It did take me a bit out of the experience for a time. In Treypang 2, we play as Subject 106. We're locked up by the Horizon Corporation. With no memories of what's going on, we break out of a black site and team up with Task Force 27. From there, we have a selection of missions of various black sites and Horizon corporate hotspots. There are missions along the critical path, along with side missions. The side missions tend to be holding off waves of enemies, but there's plenty of fun due to how strong the combat system is. One side mission highlight has us descend into an underground research facility. What follows is the game's best use of horror that had me on the edge of the seat the entire time. Another great feature is the combat simulator. Back at base, you could select combat environments found in the campaign to revisit through wave-based combat. It adds to the already high replayability of Treypank 2. You could even unlock cheats by meeting the criteria of completing missions on certain difficulties. Things that were a blast from the past, like big head mode and squeaky voices. Remember the days when these kind of things were unlockables and not paid unlockables? Nice to see a studio remember that. We'll be spending most of our time going against the Horizon Corporation. This megacorp seems to have its hand in everything and got into plenty of questionable territory. Human experimentation to research into anomalies.
There are cultists as well, and there's lots of talk about us, Subject 106 in regards to breaking the cycle. Not everything is as it seems with Task Force 27. There's plenty to piece together. These drones that we could find tucked away give more insight into who we are as Subject 106. There are plenty of intel lore pickups to read, although I found a bit too much on that front. I wouldn't mind it if they pulled one exposition trick Fear used, the phone messages. There was something charming about them that would have worked well here. You could feel the heavy influence of Fear in the story, although it does enough to stand on its own. Lots of crazy shit in your last mission. It's what Horizon doesn't understand. Anomalies aren't meant to be played with. Overall, Trepang 2 is a wonderful game, a fantastic spiritual successor to the original Fear. There's so much love and care put into everything within. If you're a fan of Fear, Hell, FPS titles in general, Trepang 2 is a must play. It's a title I'm hoping gets its due. You know, titles from Monolith Productions serve as a great source for spiritual successors. Whether that's Blood, Fear, No One Lives Forever, and most of all, Condemned. So indie devs, give it some thought. Whatever they end up doing, I look forward to seeing what Trepang Studios puts out next. Thanks for watching. Boulder Punch out.